Have you ever read your Bible and, and come across the parables of Yeshua? The parables of Jesus, of how he used all these agricultural stories to teach his people about the hidden mysteries of the gospel. And if you did, you may have noticed a pattern that most of these parables have to do, do with one simple thing. And that is proclaiming the gospel. You see, Yeshua could have talked about many things. There were many issues in his day worthy of addressing, but he had limited time and, few, and, and he only spoke very targetedly at a few things. And almost all of his parables were about the gospel, the Great Commission, the same thing that was the very last thing he told his disciples before he ascended. And I want to submit to you that there was many things he could have even said right before he left. But he kept just talking about the Great Commission, about going into the world, proclaiming the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and teaching them all that I have commanded you. Making disciples is what he was talking about. And in this parable I want to show you today, it's no different. Yeshua is going and he's talking about the parable of the growing seed. And he's trying to teach his disciples about how to proclaim the gospel and what to expect when he when interacting with people who've never heard the gospel before. And me and my proclaiming of the gospel and going out into streets and to wherever I go and, and, and trying to proclaim it and tell people about him. I have found this to be incredibly relevant and true. And I want to show you what he meant by this parable. In Mark 4 verse 26, we read the following. And he said, the reign of God is as when a man scatters seed on the ground, then sleeps by night and rises by day while the seed sprouts and grows. He himself does not know how for the soil yields crop by itself. First the blade then the head and after that the completed grain in the head. And when the crop is ready, immediately he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Now, let me ask you a question. If you've ever gardened before and you go into your garden, you're, you're planting a seed, you're planting a plant. Maybe it's a tree or something along those lines and you start watering it and you're, you're done. You, you've prepared the ground. You've, you've, you've put the seed and you've put the water and you're it's all ready. And then the next day you, you get you, you, you rush out of bed. You're, you just wake up, you rush out of bed, you get there and you look at your plant where the ground was. And you're like, and you're disappointed. And you're like, where's my plant? I just planted it yesterday. Why is it not a tree yet? Is that what we would do? No, we, we have an expectation that we just planted it. We're not going to see something happen yet. And we don't know when exactly we're, we're going to do our part. We're going to water it. We, we are not the ones who actually makes it grow, but we can do help it grow. We can put water. We can make sure the soil is well. Um, as, as fruitful, we can do all these things that the sun doesn't kill it or whatever else. We can make sure that the environment is right for this seed to grow into a fruitful plant. But we don't know when it's going to blossom. We don't know when it's going to be fruitful. We only know when it has been after the fact. So why do we treat it differently when we pray or spread the gospel? Oftentimes we will go out into maybe you go into a street, maybe you go into your uh, grocery store, maybe you go into a school classroom, maybe you go into wherever you are and you tell someone about your Messiah and they don't take, get it. They don't immediately just swallow it up and bear this amazing plant and fruit. And now it's this massive plant that grows. No, you plant a little seed in them. And you don't see much happen. And sometimes you actually move away from the ground that you planted that seed at and you never see what happens. But what was your responsibility? It was simply to plant the seed or to water a seed that was already planted. Similarly, today we have a responsibility to simply plant a brand new seed for someone who's never heard the gospel or water the seed in someone who maybe has heard the gospel, but maybe an incorrect version of it, or maybe a, a, they're still immature to a place where they've not received salvation yet. Either way, when we get to someone, we need to have that expectation of I'm going to plant or I'm going to water. 
but God brings the increase. I may only be watering a, a seed that someone else has planted 20 years ago, but I'm doing my duty. You see, brothers and sisters, all too often we get disappointed. We're like, we run out of that house in the morning and the next day and we look at the plant and we're like, why didn't it grow yet? When it comes to people, we need to be patient as we are with plant. And that's the point that Yeshua is trying to make here. He's saying this man, he, he, he plants it, he goes to bed, he sleeps and he does not know how it grows. He does not know when it grows. He does not know anything. He only does his part. You see, very often I have seen various types of people. For example, only this week I went out and we went to preach the gospel in the streets. And we had there was this man there. He was standing. He was he had music in his ear and he's listening. And I just felt the father pull me to him. And I went to him and I asked him, hey, brother, how are you doing? And I asked him, hey, can I is there anything I can pray for you for or anything like that? And he's like, what? What are you talking about? And, 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 and I'm like, yeah, I come in the name of Jesus. Do you know about him? And he's like, no, I don't know about him. Who's that? And he's this man has never heard about Jesus before ever. And I was so excited because I get to plant something and see, I didn't I had no idea what the ground was like. I had no idea what, how fast he is going to take this. But it wasn't for about me selling him things so that I and then I have this expectation that I must see him come to salvation. I had no idea what would happen. And I started to asking him what he would do. Where, where do you think he would go when he dies one day? And he said he think he'll be like nothing. And I said, oh, wow, that's crazy, man. So tell me about this music you're listening to. Did someone how did that music come about? Did someone have an instrument and someone played it and someone composed it and someone had the thought of this composition comes before this? We have a verse, we have a chorus. We're going to put this note in there, that place. We have an outro. We have uh, vocals. We have uh, uh, words that will make sense sequ in sequence. We have all these amazing things that an artist put together. And that's what you're listening to right now, right? He's like, yeah. And say, so, well, can that fall out of the sky out of, from nothing and just fall on the ground and, and into this beautiful composition that you are listening to right now? He says, no way. That would be crazy. And I said, well, exactly. That's why we have a creator, because everything, everyone, we, me, you, this creation around us, these leaves, everything is masterfully, intelligently designed and created. It is not just something that fell out of the sky by random chance. In fact, you can make something fall out of the sky by random chance, millions and millions and millions of time, as much as you want unto infinity. And you will never find the kind of scientific accuracy necessary to make what has happened today here happen. It cannot happen by any other means except for by a creator. And that creator has created you and he is calling you back right now. And he was like, wow, that's interesting. You know, and, and I told him, you know, brother, let me pray for you. And he said, all right. And me and my friend, we took his hand. We prayed for him. We said, Father, come and reveal yourself to this man right now. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for freedom. God, I thank you that you love him, Lord. And you, you've showed him now, Lord. Come on, open his eyes, Father. And as soon as we said, Amen, his face lit up. And he had life in his eyes. And he said, wow, thank you. And his eyes teared up a little bit. And I said, brother, can I get you a Bible? And he says, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so we talked a little bit more and soon we left. I went, grabbed the Bible from my car, brought him a Bible. And he was so amazed. He said, and he opened the Bible in front of us and he started just looking at it and reading. And he was so excited. And look at what he said next, brothers and sisters. He says, I think my life just changed today. And in that moment, we all knew what happened. We knew that God in such a quick moment came to change his heart like that. Half an hour later, we left him and then we only drove past him again and we saw him still reading that Bible. And see, God is working a transforming thing in his heart where the seed has taken root in really good ground. And he may very well come to bear good fruit one day because of one short encounter like that. But then shortly thereafter, we came to another man, a man who said he was a Christian, who was a believer, yet all the other men who were his friends, they were around him and there was one who was on drugs. There was another who, there was sin all around. 
Yet this man thought that he was a Christian and the way he was speaking, it was clear that he did not know God. But then as I approached that group, I, I just said, hey, is there anyone here who's got pain in their back? I feel and this man, he came forward, he said, yes, it's me. And I said, cool, bro, let me pray for you. And we prayed for his back. We prayed a few times until all the pain left his back and God healed his back. But then shortly thereafter, he just, oh, thank you very much. And, and he just turned around He just went. You see, he, his ground was different. He was not ready. His harvest was not ready. And see, we have this incredible contrast, incredible unpredictability between people. And this is really the harvest that God talks about, where the harvest is ready. That means that, for example, that first man, he was ready to be harvested. He is like the field of God, ready to be harvested. He is hungry for the truth. And see, God prepared his heart all the way until we reached his front door. But see, as we plant these seeds, some of them will grow and, and grow to be a majestic tree. Others, other seeds will not make it. It will be burned away. It will, it will, other things will have come. They will, maybe they will come vultures. It will come ravens. It will come other things and, and pick the seeds off the ground. There will come all of these threats that will destroy the seeds that we plant or, th- or the water that we pour out. But what is our responsibility? Our responsibility is simply to plant and water. God brings the increase. You see, you are not the one who by your eloquence and by how well you do things. It's not about that. That's not how well you how, how well, that's not what's dependent on how someone is, how that plant is going to grow. It is simply on you watering and giving love to that plant. True love. But God is the one who must bring the increase because, and then therefore it's only God who gets the glory. Because see, if we were the ones who made plants physically grow, who dictated this one grows, this one grows, this one grows, who does all these things, we would can be able to take glory for ourselves, wouldn't we? But no, we understand it's God that makes it grow. Therefore, God gets the glory when it grows and when it blossoms. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 6 says the following. I planted, Apollos watered. But God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything. But only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are none. And each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. God's building. Furthermore, God says that he will give to each laborer according to his wages. Therefore, how you worked, how hard you worked in your field. In other words, the people of God is proclaiming the gospel, planting and watering. That is what is going to determine your wages in the kingdom to come. That is what is going to determine your reward. In other words, those who may have said, I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus, but did not do what he told us to do by going out and proclaiming the gospel. You can keep as many commandments as you want. But if you did not go and proclaim the kingdom that you have been given, you will not receive a wage. No master will give a wage to laborers who were lazy all day, who sat indoors all day, who were maybe just afraid or who did whatever, but who did not have boldness and confidence in him and did not go out. You see, brothers and sisters, we can be oppressed by the enemy, but we need to get break free from those chains so that we can go and proclaim the gospel. If you feel afraid of people, die to yourself and proclaim the gospel. If you feel that you don't have time, make time and proclaim the gospel. Even if it's in a little bit, but if it's in a little way, even if it's by just telling someone on your way how much God loved them, proclaim the gospel. It's not about how well you do it. It is about simply watering and planting. It is simple. It is easy. It's not about all of these majestic things, the majestic things and the works of God comes, but it is from God. It's not from ourselves. So we do the simple works and God brings the miracles. God brings the crazy stuff like that man I just explained in the beginning. That was not my eloquence of speech. That was not me. That was none of me. I was simply someone who planted a seed. And so that means that you simply need to go and uncover the ground and plant a seed. That's all that it takes. And it's easy. It's simple. And it brings such freedom, freedom that we don't always see. Brothers and sisters, there's many times that I don't see what I just explained in that first person. Most of the time, almost, we don't see that. Such an incredibly instant transformation in someone's heart. But 
When we walk away and someone else comes on waters, we walk away and something else happens and God moves and God gives dreams and God gives visions and God does miracles, people's life change. But if we never planted that first seed, they would never be where they are today, even if we didn't see the fruit of our labors. But God sees the fruit and he will reward every labor according to his wages. And in verse 13, we read the following, that each one's work will become manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. At the end of the age, there will be coming a day when all our works will be disclosed and put out in the open. There will come a day where everything you've done, whether you fed the poor, whether you cast out a demon, whether you heal the sick, whether you kept his commandments and this or that way, whatever you did, whatever works you did, it will be burned. And whatever is left after God's fire consumes it, that is gold. That is what is worthy of him. That is what is worthy. And so, brothers and sisters, that means that it's not just about doing these things either. I want to submit one more thing to you. It is about the heart that you have behind it. If you do these things with love and a good intent, it will produce good fruit. But if you do it out of selfish ambition, maybe to be seen by others, you're giving money here so others can see you, you're doing all these things to be seen by others, your works will burn up and it will be like nothing. It will be like you never did anything in the first place because it's only for your exaltation in this world. Instead of you making yourself least, simply doing these things because you love God and you love your neighbor, and then God will see it. And when that works get burned, it will be like gold. And that's the wages you get rewarded for. That is what you will be honored for in the kingdom to come. So brothers and sisters, I hope this teaching blessed you. I encourage you to even in a small way go and start planting seeds and watering plants. It is important. It is what our belief is about. It is the Great Commission. It is the kingdom we are supposed to proclaim. You have not received what you, you've not received what you got just to keep it to yourself. That is a sin in itself. You have received it to proclaim it to others, just like your Messiah did. Can you imagine what would become of us if our Messiah decided to keep all the glory that he had for himself and never pour out his life as a drink offering for us? Just think about that for a second. Now follow his example. Die to yourself. Die to your fears. Don't let the enemy oppress you. If your Messiah did it, you can do it. And even more so, if I could do it, you could. Because I was so fearful that I sh shook the first times I ever prayed for people because I was afraid. But I knew my God was greater.